prosecuting people for possession of tiny amounts of drugs, we wouldn't be in the overdose crisis that we're in today. Uh, it is simply not an effective strategy. I want to show you first one thing so we can all get centered. This is a gram. It's a Splenda pack. That's a gram. The Oregon committee that just set the limits for decriminalization set possession of one gram of heroin or two grams of cocaine. It's not an ounce. It's not a kilo. It's not. It's a tiny, tiny amount consistent with the need to use drugs daily or to be sick. So the important question that you should ask your prosecutor is what really happened in our court system when you prosecute somebody for a tiny amount of drugs? And the answer is not very much. It is not going to be the answer to uh, the substance use disorder or the overdose crisis that we have. In King County, when we looked at hard at what we did with people who had possessed less than a gram, we found that it took more than a year to resolve at each case had more than one and a half warrants. Each person spent 15 days in jail, not as punishment, but because they got arrested because they missed court dates. So at the end of the day, this you shouldn't assume that you know, and you shouldn't assume that courts is there as a path to treatment for people with tiny amounts of drugs. The best thing about this bill is it's finally an acknowledgement that the strategy to help us manage substance use disorder does not lie in prosecution, in jail, and in courts. For tiny amounts of drugs, that strategy is much better in the community making those connections. So as difficult as passing this bill might be, I think the real challenge for this legislature is to fund it. And that's where uh, you know the rubber meets the road here. We need to build the instead. If you're not going to go to court, let's build something else that works better. If we don't, there'll be a backlash. There'll be a lot of push to double down on recriminalization of possession. Thank you. Thank you. Um